Hello everyone from Motion VFX. In this video, I will teach you how to use MO2, the brand new plugin for Final Cut Pro 10 and Motion 5 in order to create stunning 3D animations. The project you can see in action was totally animated and processed in Final Cut Pro 10 with MO2. And during this video, I will introduce you through the interface and the workflow and point out some amazing cool effects like 3D text reflection, refraction, and instances. But before to start and play with, I will show you the project in full screen mode. So, as I've said before, this project was fully animated and renderer inside Final Cut Pro 10. And this project, in fact, the main goal of this project was to create this video tutorial. So, inside this tutorial, I will show you how to recreate each of these shots, how to apply all these effects. And, in fact, I've divided this video tutorial in six chapters, from how to customize an MO2 template with your own logo, for example, to how to start from scratch a new project with your own 3D object. And then we go deeper inside amazing effects like reflection, how to use Instancer for animation. But let's start with templates and how to customize it. There is two ways to start a project inside MO2. The first one is to go to titles and go to MO2 folders. Inside you will find dozen and dozen templates by default directly after installing MO2. So it's quite nice to have all this project available right after the installation here. So you've got the different categories of project like this one. So I can show you all these categories. So the first one is the basics. So mainly it's a simple project without animation. So we've got logo, 3D text and placeholder, for example, on this paper bag. So we can use drop zone, for example. And then here you've got some general purpose titles, which in this case, a very complex animation by using instancers. So we'll see instancer later on in this video. And you've got a more colorful project like this one with many animations, 3D object. And of course, you can modify everything for this late show title. For example, you can modify anything inside this project. So you've got a logo categories also. Of course, you will be able to change this logo and add a new logo, a SVG logo, we'll see just after that. And uh, it's quite nice to be able to modify everything from the light uh, to the color. And for example, this is another example with instances. Of course, you've got uh, lower third titles, which is very nice because it's a full 3D lower third animation. Very nice with a light effect and a 3D element with a reflection. And of course, everything is customizable. You've got uh, titles overlay. You've got a placeholder product presentation like this one on this bag. So of course, you can use drop zone by a click. You can add any video or picture inside the iPad, for example. But you've got also, if you go uh, just after that, uh, some uh, wall screen, screen wall directly like this and using drop zone. So it's very nice to be able to modify anything just by clicking on one video inside the, the drop zone. So this is it for all the template available. I will go to the logos one and I will try to get one and just select the first one. Like this one, I press E to add in my timeline here in my project view, the project directly here. Like this one, as soon as you click on it, it will load the scene like this one. And then you can scrub directly here and see in real time the 3D effect and the 3D scene with all the animation, all the blooming, all the motion blur, all the particles, all the confetti like this one. So you see it's quite fast, really fast in fact. And uh, very nice to have this uh, engine directly here inside my uh, viewer. On the top of this viewer, I've got uh, two uh, icons, two modes. In fact, I've got the beauty mode like this one with a diamond. 
and I've got the edit mode. The edit mode, it's very useful, we will see. But first we'll start with the beauty mode like this one. So with the diamond here, you've got in fact the possibility to have access to many post-process effects here. And to show this one, you have to click on the left icon here, inspector like this one, and then you have access to all the post-process effects and all the parameters, all the value you can select. For example, here, I can go to this frame a little bit to show you everything. And I can select, for example, the focus point. So you can, you just have to click on this element or I can click on the confetti, for example. So I will select this one and automatically the point will be on the focus point will be done on this confetti or for example, on the logo, of course, inside all these circles. So you can select the amount of focus. You can add some motion blur, for example, or remove motion blur. If I change and go to the first frame at the beginning on the sequence here, you see that you've got this panel. And if I add motion blur, automatically you can see it in action. There is no render here directly. You've got a quick response inside the viewer. So you can add some details with lens sharpness, or you can add aberration, chromatic aberration, uh, in the border of your object with a channel red, green, and blue, directly like this. You can add some bloom effect, like a glow, which is really nice, really cool, would give you this kind of effect. And all the lights, all the luminance objects will create automatically this bloom effect. Of course, you've got some dirt amount. Uh, I will show you later on the dirt amount on, on the project. And you've got vignette and distortion directly inside the viewer here. You can switch from right to left to left to right this inspector and just to switch off and hide this inspector, just click on this icon directly like this. So I've used here this post-process effect and you can of course select this edit mode to remove all this post-process, so which is quite useful also when you just have to create some animation, you don't want to see all the projects. So for example, here you see that it's very it's more responsive when I've select this edit mode without all the post process. So it could be very useful if your computer is not so fast and not so powerful. So you can switch to this mode to animate and to place your 3D object in the 3D space. So I can add here my beauty uh, with all the effect like this one, just by clicking on the diamond icon like this one. And of course, now I can go to the right part here. And as you can see for people who are using motion a little bit there is some icon very useful for 3d animation and very common from motion users so here you, you've got some transition rotation and scaling animation for the camera but also you can switch here or you can see i've got the active camera uh, element which is more the render camera and you've got the perspective view which I like to call it like the director view as you can move around your scene and be um, able to see all the animation inside your scene. So if I switch to a perspective, for example, like this one, you will see that I'm more in my uh, 3D view like this one, my 3D scene. And then with uh, this button on the right part, I can, for example, rotate, scale and translate directly here. So it's quite useful. For example, if I want to go to the top of this scene, I can switch like this to the rotation and now I can move on the top of my 3D scene. I can pan a little bit like this and you see that I'm able to see the camera and the lights directly here. So it's quite nice. And of course you can zoom directly inside. So just select the right icon like this one. So now here I can select and play a little bit uh, playhead inside my project and see the animation of each object. See the animation also of the camera, for example. I can zoom inside a little bit here. Okay, I will pan like this. And as I move inside, you see that as I'm in beauty mode like this, post-process mode, I can see the motion blur on each confetti directly with my perspective view, which is quite amazing here. Uh, the cool thing also, I've got a reframe button on the left, like this one. So how it works, it's quite simple. You just have to select 3D object. For example, in this case, I will select the logo. Then I click on the reframe button and automatically it will zoom in and put my 3D logo directly inside in the middle of my view. So it's very useful when you need to reframe an object and to select it and then click on this reframe button 
it's very, very useful when you need to move quickly to your object like this one. Inside Demo 2, there is a very helpful feature, which is when you select your project like this one, and you move your cursor on the top of the viewer, automatically it will outline the object you are on. So it's very useful to know exactly which object you will select. So inside the inspector, I can see that my project is divided in mainly two parts. I've got the scene settings and the scene content, which is uh, obvious, for example, but I will show you how it works. So I've got here in my scene settings, the environment settings, which is very useful in my iPhone project. You will see that I will use a lot. I've got the background where you can find the background and select your background. And of course, you've got the render settings when you can find all the features and parameters for the final rendering. So in this case, I've got many parameters, so I can double click on the top of the inspector and I can see that now my inspector use all the height of um, my interface, which is very nice. So I can see many more parameters inside Final Cut Pro 10. And then I can select here many parameters I can add or remove, like for example, film grain, uh, the bloom effect, for example, I can remove it from the render. And also I've got access to anti-aliasing, which is very useful if you need a, a more sharp render or for example, a more smooth around your object, you can select all these parameters directly inside the render settings. And in fact, if I close this one and I open the scene content, I will have access to all my 3D elements or 3D object inside my scene, which is very nice, like the camera, like the plane here, the plane, which is the floor in this case. Uh, of course, you, you can see that when I put my mouse on the top of the element, they will be outlined like this. So it's uh, very nice. So you see my logo is composed by different elements here. I've got the tube, I've got my custom logo here inside the folder, which is very nice because you can clean a little bit the interface and it's very easy to go and dip inside each element. So as you can see, my logo is made from a SVG logo that I can replace, of course. I will use uh, some sphere, I will use some tube, I've got modifiers, instancers. I've got many elements for the animation in this case. And of course, I can go down. I've got more instancers, more modifier like this for the animation. I can see that I'm using confetti with instancers like this one. And I've got the two lights, uh, which are nice. I can switch off the light and see directly the result inside my viewer like this one, which is nice. Okay, so I can go up like this one. And on the bottom of the inspector, you've got some more elements, like a add button to add 3D object or element. You've got also the possibility to add materials, to load the scene and to save the scene. So if I need to add, for example, a 3D object, a model, I can go directly here. I can add 3D text, SVG logo, instancers with different kind of instancer, linear grid, radial, you've got light, different kind of lights, a new object, and also you can add a camera directly here. You can also add materials, like for example, the plane, as you can see, there is a materials apply on it. So to do this, you need to select an object inside the inspector. By default, when you install MO2, there is dozen and dozen materials, which is very nice because directly from MO2, you've got materials available on it. And of course, you can load the scene and save the scene, as I said before. So we will see everything how to add uh, materials and object later on. But in this case, I would like to show you how to replace quickly a SVG logo like this one, of course. I would like to remove the Motion VFX logo. So I will click on Reload SVG. So now I can select my SVG logo, my YAC logo. SVG, it's a vector-based file, which is uh, very useful to do some extrusions. So you can export SVG from Adobe Illustrator, for example, or Affinity Designer. So I select my logo like this one. And as you can see, this is very a nice touch from the developers from Motion VFX is the fact that directly when you import a file, you can see if your logo is correct or not. For example, sometimes you've got uh, the right path, but uh, they are missing a hole, for example, inside. So you need to go back inside the uh, Illustrator or Affinity Designer then to little adjustment inside this one. Here directly from this window, you can select if inside your logo it's a full pass or if it's a hole like this one. 
So I can say that the A, it's a hole and I remove the A, for example. So it's very useful because you don't need to go back automatically to your uh, vector-based software to modify your logo. So in this case, I will import my logo directly here by clicking on Reload. Okay, so as you can see, my logo is at the right place inside my project, 3D project here. I've got maybe some issue concerning the scale and the position of my element. I will check inside my camera view like this one to see the final render view here. And as you can see, my logo is a little bit on the left and maybe a little bit too big here. But it's not a problem at all because I can modify everything inside MO2. So I can select my object here and go to the scale inside the inspector and reduce a little bit my logo like this one, 0.8. And then I can, for example, change the position like this one. So I've got many parameters. Of course, I can animate any parameter. So I can move a little bit on the right here with a position here with a X position like this one. Okay, I can readjust everything here by using the gizmo directly inside the viewer or using uh, the parameters inside the inspector like this one. And now you can see that my logo fit perfectly inside my 3D sphere and with all the light and all the confetti is directly like this. So very quick, very easy to change your logo inside the MO2 templates like this one. As you've seen here, it was very easy to change uh, your logo by changing the SVG file and modify, customize your own template. But in the next chapter, I will show you how to create from scratch a new project with your own 3D element. So we've seen that we can start a number two project from a template, but you can also go to generators here and inside generators, you'll find a MO2 folder. Inside this one, you'll find only one element, which is very useful because it's an empty project. So you can select your MO2 empty project like this one, press E to add inside your Final Cut Pro 10 project like this one. And as soon as you select this element, it will load the scene, which is very fast because it's an empty. There is only one camera and one background. So I can add a new object in this empty project. I will go to from library. So I will have my window with all my objects like this one. You see on the left that there is many categories. I've got some stars where I can select as favorite when I like an object. I've got all the information on each object. As you can see, I can have the information of vertices, meshes, texture, and light. So I can see, for example, if one object is very complex, very heavy. And in this case, uh, what I would like to do, it's quite a light object to show you something very nice. I will take this uh, light cyber and uh, this one is very useful because there is only two meshes. Okay, so two objects. I can click on add. It will add automatically this uh, lightsaber with uh, the plug here and the beam on this part. So I can select both. And if you go to the scene content, you see that inside my neon straight shot, I've got the plug and the beam with two different materials on it. So I can select uh, the plug with these materials and the beam with and this one also. So the cool thing is when you've got many elements, you can animate each sub object, in fact. And in this case, I can, for example, animate the beam directly here, the scale of the beam, like this one. So it's very useful in this case. So I can turn around like, like this here. I can play, of course, with all the parameters, for example, for the bloom. I can add some bloom or reduce one. And in the case that I would like to customize more and more the object, I can select the material and say that I would like to change the luminance, light and color. So I can change directly here. You see how fast it is to modify everything like this. And of course, I can modify the intensity of the beam here. So this is very nice and very easy to add object from the 3D uh, library and of course to customize this object. In this case, I would like to go to import a new object. So I will select the left button here, import. The great news with MO2 is the fact that we've got a wider palette of uh, 3D format supported. So now you can import 3D Studio Max format file. You can import Lightwave. You can import Colada. You can import FBX. 
and also Cinema 4D scene directly inside MO2. So for my project, I've used an FBX file for the iPhone. I found a free object on the internet. So this is my element. I've put all the link concerning this uh, object inside the description. So here uh, I've got my element with all the materials. I click on choose like this one. Okay, so it will import automatically my object and I've got a window so I can uh, rename, for example, uh, the name of my 3D object. I can select in which library I would like to save my object. I've got a YAC library, for example. I've got the size, so you can modify the size. So it's very useful to get the right size and the right scale for all your projects you import inside MO2. And you've got a different workflow for the texture. So you can use a metalness, a roughness, and specular glossiness or legacy element. So in this case, I will use, for example, uh, metalness or, yes, metalness and roughness. And I select OK directly like this. So we will import the model, load the materials directly here and it will be directly integrated to my library. And I've got all the information concerning the vertices, meshes, and texture directly like this. So I select OK. So I've got my object in my 3D project, my MO2 project. I can turn around to show you a little bit the object like this. OK. So inside here, I can put a light because it's a little bit dark. And I will show you maybe more. I will play with the intensity of the light, maybe. Yeah, like this. So we'll see more of the object. So I've got my two objects. I've got the iPhone and you see that uh, there is a dock also. So I can switch on off directly from the inspector like this one. What I will do, I will remove the dock directly, right click and select delete like this one. So now I've got only my iPhone. I will reduce the bloom effect like this for this moment. Maybe I will add a little more later on. And I can frame it, I can turn around, and as you can see here, I've got uh, many elements inside my iPhone object. So this is uh, very nice. I can select, for example, the back of the iPhone here. You will see it will open automatically all the elements from my iPhone with all the materials assigned on it. I can click on these materials, and automatically I've got all the parameters from the materials here. I can click on it and select a new one. I will go to Metal. And maybe I will select the gold or maybe copper. Copper would be better. So I select copper like this one. And you see that the result is quite uh, strange. It's not like my little preview here, but we will see that if I remove the light and if I turn around, I've got some reflection on it. So where does it come from? I will show you here. If I go up in the scene settings, I can go to environment here. And you see that I've got many environment map available by default inside MO2. So I can select a day one, a day map directly here. And I will see that I've got the reflection. So it's more like copper in this case, more lighter. So I can go inside the materials parameters and adjust different parameters. For example, I can reduce uh, the metalness. Then I can add some roughness in this case, like this one, so I can see that I've got less reflection, but I keep the specular on my object, which is nice. I can go back to my environment map and select another environment map. And in this case, I won't take a real environment map. I can go to CG, so it's for computer graphics generated environment map. And I can select different maps like this. What is really cool with this one is the fact that you can simulate a studio lightning here. And I can, for example, select this one, select OK. And if I play with some parameters here, you see that if I add some metalness, or for example, if I play with the roughness a little bit here, I will remove like this. Here I, got, I keep the specular. And if I move and rotate around, you will see that we've got all the lights like if we were in the studio. And in fact, for all the shots for the project, I use only environment map to light my object. So I will use, for example, this one. So as you see, the map is very important to check how you will uh, light your object here. In this case, you've got some sharp uh, environment map or some more diffuse, more blur uh, elements, like this one, for example. 
So I can select this one, which is quite nice, like this one. And if you play with the angle, you can see, you can animate, in fact, the light around the object. So it's quite nice because you don't have to animate different lights. You just animate the rotation of the environment map and it works perfectly like this one. So you see that the little Apple logo is not right. So I can select, for example, the same materials, but I will change some parameters to have different aspects like this. Okay, so I'll put the roughness at the maximum and the metalness at the minimum, like this one. And now I've got two different render, you see, like this result here. And it's quite nice to play with, like this one. And for the front one, uh, there is uh, this element here with these materials. So it's a glass. And if I select the glass, like this one, so I've got many elements with many materials. Of course, for uh, different cameras or the back, for the inside elements, like this. But in this case, I will select the glass. Okay, you see that if I remove it, I can see the wallpaper screen of uh, the iPhone. So this one is the right one. So I will select the material and I will go to material and I can play with the opacity, for example, like this one and see that I can show the element. Or what I can do is to go to materials and I've got some transparent material, which is very nice. Uh, I can rotate on it. But you see that I don't see any transparency. Why? Because I've got some refraction on it. So if I put the refraction to zero or to one, uh, like this one, and play with the opacity, so now I've got the light, like there was a glass on the top. So there is a nice effect with the light and the environment map, like this one. And I've got my wallpaper in the background behind the glass. So, of course, you can modify the wallpaper. So, for example, for this iPhone, I can go to uh, the Albedo texture on this one and select library, or you can go to texture directly here and you can remove it by clicking on the cross or click on the texture and you can select from the library or you can import directly a different texture on it. So, I will select this one. And now you see that I've got the right texture apply on it directly like this. And very easy to modify anything inside MO2. So you see the final result with the environment map. Okay. So uh, this is quite nice, but also sometimes what you need, it's maybe to be able to change the texture here. So it's why you've got some drop zone at the bottom here. So I can select uh, a different texture for inside the drop zone. I can apply on it. I can go back and select a second drop zone, click on it. I will select a second wallpaper like this one. Okay, I will add a third one. Here, for example, I'll take the original one, apply, and then I will select the fourth one here and I will select this one. Okay, so now I can switch from the texture source to library to drop zone. And in this case, you see that I can now select from the different drop zone and change automatically the texture of my object. So which is very nice when you have to do many elements with different texture on it. So you can switch on it. You can check the texture on it and modify different parameters. So if I go to the official iPhone XS wallpaper, I can go to the parameters inside the drop zone and I can adjust the size. For example, in this case, I will play with a Y scale, like this one. Okay. And now I've got the right position. I can play with this. Okay. Like this one. So you can play on the Y axis for and the X axis, of course, but also on the scale on this one. So now I've got my iPhone, which is quite nice. The right texture, so I can duplicate it. And because this is the same object, I've got the same parameters. But in this case, what I can do is to go to my different object, like this the second one, and I can select the materials. And I'll go directly to library, to drop zone, and I can change the drop zone very easy, like this one.
and now I've got two different iPhone and in fact I just switch to one texture to another one with a drop zone like this so I've got my two iPhone with uh, two textures inside and I can turn around and see how it will react with my environment map and to be honest environment map it's uh, one of my favorite uh, tool inside MO2 because it's very powerful uh, as I said in this project I use mainly only environment map uh, to light all the iPhone so if I go to the environment map here in the scene settings I can show you that with the horizontal offset you can turn and rotate the environment so it will animate automatically the light and the reflection on your iPhone and it's a very very powerful tool you can select different uh, environment map to change the final result so if I can turn maybe a little bit here uh, on the edges you see that the result is totally different I can turn around and show you the, little, the back a little like this and you will see that it's very useful because you don't have to animate many lights, just turn and use uh, the horizontal offset. You will have very good results for the animation here. So it's very simple to use and the effect is very drastic and quite amazing. So I can play a little bit. I will zoom here and we show you the corner of the iPhone like this. I will turn around a little bit here like this. And just to show you that how you can create some nice animation of the light just by using here uh, the horizontal offset of the environment map like this one. And of course, uh, it really depends on the map uh, you will use in this case. So I will just readjust here my settings and you can add some color correction on it. So you can play with the gamma if you want to add more contrast, for example, or you can play with the brightness here to add more specular on it and saturation in case you've got some color on your environment map like this. Okay, so I can, for example, go to the first frame, add some animation keyframe on this one. So I will select 720 degrees so i've got uh, three rotation like this one and you can see the result directly here so it's quite nice okay and the fact is you can keep this animation and change the environment map like this and have a totally different look on the borders here so i can select maybe a soft one just to show you how the result will be different like this okay so it's less less reflection on this one I can select this one so it's very smooth here on the element and another amazing tool uh, parameters I really like it's uh, illuminance parameters which means that you can play with the intensity of the luminance and any texture can automatically emit light from uh, a texture so it's a very nice feature combining with the blue beam effect and it's very nice here in this case I would just darker a little bit background here just to show you uh, this element. And the fact is that illuminance parameters is a physical render. So it means that I will show you in the next chapter reflection. So we can combine reflection with illuminance and the result is quite amazing. And I will show you this right now in the next chapter for the reflection. <music>
push a little bit my disc like this. Okay. And I will play a little bit with a scale like this one, just to be sure to be in the right position. So I've got my camera active. I can check if the motion of the camera is okay. Okay, everything. I will select my disc now. And to add some reflection, I need a material. So I will go to my library. I will go to a metal uh, material and I will select the chrome, which is this one. Okay. So as you can see, I've got some um, reflection or lightning uh, with the material with my environment map, like this one. But what I really need, it's the reflection of the iPhone. So to do this, I just select my disk in the inspector like this one. Okay. And if I go below, I've got here a part called planar reflection and this one. Okay. And what I have to do just to click on enable. And as soon as I've clicked enable, you see that my material switch and I've got real reflection on this one. So if I move here, up a little bit the floor you see that the reflection come closer than my iPhone and if I switch to perspective view I will show you that it's a, a physical perfect uh, render of my reflection so it's not a fake uh, reflection with a, a second layer duplicate layer it's a real reflection and I can change for example to show you how cool is it to the materials so I can use this kind of materials and you see that the reflection depends also of what type of material you are using on it. So it's a very nice feature. I really like it because when you combine materials with reflection, uh, you've got a very nice result on it. So in this case, I can also show you that uh, we've seen just before that illuminance element. And here I will show you that illuminance fit completely with reflection. So if you add more luminance, you will add more reflection and there is more effect around here. So it's very nice. So you can play with the luminance of uh, one object, for example, and you see that the reflection depends on the luminance of the element. So everything is uh, depending on each parameters. And it's really nice to have a physical engine like this one to get this kind of result without cheating. It's a real element, uh, illuminance reflection you can play with. And it's very nice to, to add uh, this kind of element. Of course, you can modify and fake and cheat a little bit with a reflection. You can play, for example, with a rotation like this one if you need to see more of the screen, for example, but you don't want to touch the animation of the real iPhone. So you can modify a little bit uh, the reflection like this one. So it's very useful when you don't want to mess up all the other animation. And now I've got uh, uh, different parameters I can move. So. For example, for the disk, I can show you that with a new material, like uh, for example, this one, I've got, as you can see, a different blur render inside this one. But if I use wood, I won't have any reflection because there is no reflection in the wood uh, material on this one. So you can select different materials and depending on these physical parameters, you will have different results on it. So it's uh, very nice to see how it works and the fact that it's a real environment uh, depending, for example, on the bump map and on the different parameters from your materials. It's a very nice to see how it works. So don't hesitate to use a uh, reflection combining with materials and you will have some amazing render inside MO2. <music> Inside MO2, you've got, of course, some 3D text. And this time with MO2, the motion VFX developers go deeper and further with the animation and the 3D animation of the text. So as usual, you've got some text. In this case, I've used a 3D text like a 2D text to create some 3D effect with a camera uh, like this. And the cool thing, you've seen that I've got some animation in uh, for the text. So for the text, I can select the text directly inside my scene content like this, you've got access to every group and you can go inside and select any parameters, face, body, bevel, and you can add different materials for each part of this. Okay, so it's very uh, useful. Of course, you can format in any point the text, but I would like to show you in this shot, for example, I would like to add simply an animation on the text and a 3D animation. So to do this, I'll just select my text here in the inspector 
I go down in the inspector like this, and you will see that I've got my style, so I can save my style and uh, create one, but I've got text behavior. So for people who are using motion, it will be very familiar. And for other people who never open motion, you will see how easy it is to add some 3D animation inside MO2. So for example, I will select one uh, preview like this, and you see you can pre-visualize uh, the animation. So it's very neat to have this. So I can select, for example, this uh, animation. And as soon as I can play it, and at what time I can see that there is the animation, you see. So it's a 3D animation coming back from uh, the camera to the front like this. But in this case, I would like to start earlier. So I just have to go to the right position with the playhead, select start from the current frame, and automatically the animation will start at this frame. So it's very easy to use. So I can select, for example, another animation, 3 animation like this one. So I double click on it, select OK. And now I've got my animation starting here. But if I want to start later on, I can go in this frame, say start from this frame, and automatically it will start later on this frame. So it's a very nice idea to just select an in point for your animation. If I go to animation out, in this example, I've got this kind of animation. We'll select this one. I double click on it, select OK. And of course, it will keep my in point I've put before, but I can go later on, select start from frame, start from current frame in this case, and I've got now my 3D animation here. So I can show you with a right angle. So I can switch now from perspective view to active camera view, like this one. I can play it and see that my 3D text go behind my iPhones with a 3D animation. So very easy, don't hesitate to select and to test the behaviors on the 3D text. Very easy and very fast to use with MO2. One of my favorite new features inside MO2 is definitely Instancer. Instancer are very useful to create very cool animation like this one. And I will show you how to use it. And for people who know a little bit motion and use Replicator, you will see that it's very similar, but in this case, it will be with 3D object. So to create this kind of effect with a different iPhone and with this animation, I didn't use 12 iPhone and create animation with 12 iPhone. I only use three. And I will show you how to do this. So inside my inspector, in my scene, I've got only one iPhone gold on. I've got the black and space gray off at this moment. I will just need to add an instancer. So for this, I go to the add menu, like this one, and I go to instancer. I've got many type of instancer. For this time, I will go to linear, the first one. You see that I've got my instancer here. I put on the top just for the demo purpose. So what you have to do, just drag and drop your 3D object on the top of the instancer like this. And as soon as you've done this, you've got your element duplicate, replicate. So now I've got five iPhone on, on the line like this one. So I can use, for example, if I click on my instancer, I can go to the parameters. I can go to the count parameters so I can increase the number of iPhone, for example, like this. And I can move around with the offset so I can change the position of the 12 iPhone like this one. So what is very important, it's a start position and the end position. And how it works with Instancer is that Instancer will automatically interpolate between the first iPhone and the last iPhone. So for example, if I move the y-axis, you see that automatically all the intermediate iPhone will follow the end position. So I can change the z position, the y position, but also the rotation, which is very nice. You will see that the effect is quite nice. So I can change the z rotation here. And automatically, you see that my line will automatically interpolate between the first, the start position and the end position. So it's very nice because with this, you can move in this space all the element. You can rotate everything. You can play. We'll see later on on the scale. And after I can animate the camera inside all my instance. So it's very nice to, to have this. 
I can increase again the number, and of course, I can animate uh, the rotation value uh, on this. So it's very nice to do this, and it's 3D object with a 3D line in this case. So it's very nice. So I can also, if I play with a scale, in this case, I can play with a Z scale like this one, a global scale like this. So I can reduce the size for uh, the end for the last iPhone, or I can move again my camera. So it will increase the impression of the perspective, for example, in this case. Or you can do the invert, uh, the fact that you can say that the last iPhone will be bigger or smaller, like this one. So you can create very different effects on it. And it's very nice that it's very easy to animate. It's very easy to add more or less iPhone, for example, in this case. So it's very nice to just play with all these parameters like this in a 3D space with 3D objects. So uh, in this example, I will go back in my rotation, in my line like this. And I will play also with a line twisting. So it's quite the same, but in this case, I'm moving not the end position, but I'm twisting my line directly here. So these parameters will depend on which kind of instancer you will use. In this case, I can twist, you see the line. So like this, I can have some right, nice interpolation between different elements. So now I can play with all the transform. What I can do here is to switch to linear to grid, for example. So grid means that I will replicate my uh, 3D element, 3D object to a grid in X, Y, and Z axis. So it's like a cube, for example. So I will be able to modify the count on these three axes. So if you need less, for example, I would say one in X, I can add many more on Y and Z is the same. So you can modify everything inside this cube. I will go by three, by three, by three. Okay, like this one. If I turn around, you will see that we'll have a cube that I can animate like this. So you've got many controls on, on the cube. If you see that now I've got the grid size, I can switch to sphere or to cylinder. I can move the size of the cube, for example. If I go to radial, a radial one instancer, I can see that now my replication is done on a circle. In this pass, I can select different parameters for the plane. So I've got uh, X, Y, and Z axis. And I play, I can play around like this. I can remove the align rotation and go back to Y axis like this. I can play here, zoom in a little bit maybe. And as you can see, of course, every parameter can be animated. So I can animate from zero degree to uh, full degree. I can animate the radius. Okay, so in this case, I would like to have minus 360 to have a full circle. I can zoom in a little bit. So my problem is the fact that uh, they are all the same iPhone in this case. So what I could do to add multiple iPhone here. So I go back to my scene here and I will switch on my black iPhone and my space gray iPhone like this. And I put it inside the instancer also. And you will see that automatically it will add my iPhones directly inside the instancer and it will iterate automatically with the three models. So it's very nice because now I've got automatically the same animation, the same modification on my iPhone, but this time with three sources, different sources. And it's quite nice because you can add, for example, cube with circle, with triangle, for example, or many elements, 3D elements inside. So in this case, I will reduce a little bit the number. I'll put you, for example, 14 and I can also choose to select random in an instance order which is uh, very useful when you don't want the same order each time and you've got of course uh, some seeds so you can have different ways so if I select align rotation I've got now my animation right here with all the different iPhone in different order like this so it's very nice to have uh, this kind of effect so I can play now with the animation so I can start from zero with the end angle and to 360 to have all the animation. It, this is how I use the instancer for uh, the animation inside the project here like this. And the fact that 
I've used also the drop zone. It's very useful. I can change at any time very quickly uh, the texture inside different elements on my iPhone here. And you can animate then the camera around. You can animate the radius. You can animate the rotation, whatever you want inside MO2. So this is very nice feature and very easy to create some very complex um, animation with Instancer. And with one object, you can create very nice animation on it. So don't hesitate to test it. Don't hesitate to mix objects inside the same Instancer to create very nice uh, animation. In this case, I will add now, I've got my animation so I can play it and it's very useful. This is the final result. The last but not the least new feature inside MO2, and maybe my favorite new feature effects inside MO2, it's a refraction effect. So to show you how I've created the refraction water effect around the iPhone, I will start with a sphere like this. I will load a sphere, through this sphere inside my project and just put my sphere and intersect my sphere with the iPhone like this. Okay, so I will adjust the position on the front of the iPhone, between the iPhone and the camera, of course, like this. Okay, when I've got a good position, what I need to do a refraction, it's a material. So the refraction effect depends on materials. So I will create uh, one, not create, but use a transparent one called clean water, which is a transparent material. And you see that I've got specular, but also I've got some distortion, refraction, so I can go down to the materials and inside the opacity value I can put down the IOR refraction value. So now I've got no refraction on this part, okay, just a transparent sphere. But if I select my material again, like this, okay, go down on the parameters inside the opacity parameters here. So I've got some opacity, specular value I can switch on or off but I've got this IOR value. So it's very easy to use because you see that you just have to move the value to create some refraction. And with MO2, it's not like the previous version of motion object. Before, we need to cheat a little bit with texture, with the background texture. Here, it's a realistic refraction. And it means that you can add multiple objects with different refraction materials. It will work perfectly. It's a physical render. So now, no more cheat. You can play with refraction very nice and easy way. And as you can see, the result is amazing and it's very fast to compute all the refraction like this. So you can move your object, animate your object, you've got the refraction. The only tips I can give you is to not push too hard the value of the refraction. In this case, for example, here, if I go down, if I push too far the refraction, so I've got some nice effect like this. But if I go more, you see that the refraction is not so good and not realistic at all. So stay with little value like this. It will work perfectly. It really depends on what kind of uh, material you want to simulate here, for example. So if it's water or if it's glass, for example, it really depends on what you need for your project. So here I've got my sphere, but for the water effect in my project, I use a 3D model of a splash water like this. So what I will do here is just to switch off the sphere and switch on my water element. So this is the one and I put orange material plastic one, which don't have any refraction as you can see. So it's not transparent also. So if I select the material like this and I go down to the opacity parameters, I go down here. And if I switch the opacity to near zero, like this, so I've got the transparency. And now I can push a little bit the refraction. And as you can see, it works very well, even with complex objects like this one. And I can reduce a little bit to be more realistic. Okay. And if I select, for example, after you can play with different elements. So you don't need to have a transparent element to add refraction. You can add refraction on any materials, but you need at least a little transparency like this. So 
You can play with metal nails with different material. In this case, I will go back to my transparent material for the water, which uh, clean water is the best. Okay, like this. And now I can readjust a little bit because this material by default, it's uh, go a little too far with the refraction. And I can switch a little down, move down the value again, like this. So now I can rotate on it and see that I've got my water refraction effect. And it's quite nice to have this kind of result. And no rendering, I can move directly like this and see my effect in real time. So this is very nice. The only thing is I'm losing some uh, details on the top of the water. So I will use some light and this is the only shot when I add a light, here I use a light and I will put on the top of the water like this, just to add some specular uh, on, the, on the water and add more texture on it and have a better effect with the blooming effect. I think it's quite nice to have this kind of details of specular on the water. So I can move up a little bit more. And if I move my camera now to have my maybe... I can move like this, okay. Uh, I don't want my light directly visible, okay. I can rotate like this and just, okay, like this. So now I've got some specular effect on the water and I've got refraction at the same time. And you see that the result is quite nice and easy. It's definitely my effect, my favorite effect right now inside MO2. So here I can show you the final result, which is similar from this one. Here, with one light and one refraction material. To conclude this video, if you need more information concerning MO2, one place to go, motionvfx.com, where you can find many more resources concerning MO2, but also more tutorial. This is also the place if you need to add more content, like for example, templates. MO2 templates are available now at motionvfx.com and also additional pack to add more 3D objects to your content library and also more shaders with a special pack for advanced shader. So don't hesitate to follow motionvfx.com on Twitter and Facebook. See you next time. Ciao, ciao. Bye bye. <laughs>